In this video I'll be showing you how to set up open authentication using Passport and Node.js. So obviously, uh, first things first, we've just got a very simple app here. Just one route, it says welcome. I've already set up a, a Mongo DB database here, it's like Mongo's database. Uh, the collection names, tutorial database, schema. This is the only required uh, field if you're using uh, Google OAuth 2.0. Um, the Google ID, which is a string, but I added uh, an extra one username just uh, so I can more easily demonstrate it to you. Uh, but obviously this is the only one that's required. I just want to be able to display the name afterwards. And then obviously we created the model based off this schema called user. Uh, and then once we got that set up, the first step would be to go to Passport, Google, OAuth, uh, and we'll need to require these packages actually. So we'll just install, first one will be Passport, npm install Passport, second one will be this one, uh, npm install Passport, Google, o, OAuth, 20, just do that real quick, and it needs to be yeah. So yeah, now we'll require it. Uh, I always copy this actually. Can't can't Google strategy. I'll post all the links, the, all the websites that I've used in the description. Okay, now I'll be to just copy this. I'll explain all this after, once we've done it. Uh, put it down here. Okay, and now we need to set up the actual, uh, we need to get the client ID and the client secret. So first of all, you set up, you go to Google Cloud Platform, set up a new project. First thing we need to set up the OAuth consent screen, uh, which we'll just do real quick. I'll just show you, I've already set it up obviously, but you need to fill out app name, Email, that's pretty much it. You don't need to define scopes or anything. You can just press OK on all that, on all those things. Uh, and now we go to create credentials. Click create. I've already created it, so you click uh, OAuth client ID. You create that. I'll just show you real quick. And fill out all the information. This is very important. Well, because it's a local server, the first one, the first universal uh, resource indicator will be the the uh, the route that the user gets redirected to after they finish the auth authentication process, which will be this one here. The second one, which is the route that they go to to actually start the OAuth authentication process. So you fill that out here, and now we get the sensitive information because it's sensitive information. We'll be using a package called dot uh, env to actually create the. Uh, oh, whoops. Environment variables, so we don't upload it to Git, because this is, this is uh, how we... Stop other people from accessing the information. I'll just search this real quick. Once you've installed it, require. Creates a new file, just called .env. Client underscore ID equals what it is here. Client underscore secret equals what it is here. Okay, now we need to create a git ignore in the root file. It's like in the root folder. Just a dot git ignore. Just put the .env file here, and now we, we can we can uh, fill out the information. We access information using the process object. So process .env dot uh, client. What we set it to. Let's copy this here. Secret. So I'll be this way. Uh, secret. Just make sure I spell that quickly. And now the callback URL will be the 
the, the route that the user gets to redirect to once they've finished the process, once they've logged into their Google account, which we set there. And now, because this find uh, or create method here is not um, actually a built in mongoose function, we need to actually acquire the package, which is here, so the dependency. So we'll just install this here. Find or create. So once you do that, I require it up here. Uh, and then we actually apply the plugin to the skimmer, sorry, this, whatever it's called, skimmer. So we find or create. And now this will work. So, what this does is basically it gets the um, once they've logged into their Google account, it returns a profile object uh, and has a parameter of ID, and it matches. If it can't find a user document with the matching IDs as the profile ID, then it will create that in the database. If it can't, then it will. If it can, sorry, then it will then it will just return the user document with the matching ID. Uh, and obviously, because we've got two fields here, we we'll need to. Fill that one out as well. So username. It's called display. Uh, I think user. So profile. Dot display. Yeah, sorry, display name. That's how you access the username from the from the uh, user profile. So once we've done that, so the next step will be to uh, this is quite a good website. I use it for quite a lot. Uh, Actually, I think serialize and deserialize the cookie will be the next step. So we'll do that here. Copy this. Um, and then I'll explain this just in a second. So what this does, the user that's either returned or created here, it will get the ID from that and store it in a cookie, which we'll create in just a second. And then when we want to access the user object, it will, this function, the deserialize function, will be activated, and it will get the it will get the ID that's been stored in the cookie, match that which is here, to the find the document that has the matching ID uh, as the one stored in the cookie, and then it will uh, return it so you can actually access the information that you want. But it will become a lot clearer when I actually implement it. Um, yeah, so now we need to create the cookie like I just said. So, and the package for that is npm cookie session. Oh my god, why is it? Oh. There we go. Create that, make sure. Yeah. And then paste this up here, copy this. Uh use this camera, yeah, we'll cut it. It needs to be down here. This obviously just initializes passport and starts a session using passport and then keys. Uh, again, because it's sensitive information, I mean we'll create it in the as an environmental variable. Uh It can literally just be any string, it doesn't matter, we're not, just, you know, this isn't really serious, but put that in here. And the max age here, this is a millisecond, so what it's done here is it's set the cookie to last for exactly a day. And now it would actually be, to, now we need to create the route that the user goes into to actually do the authentication process. So the route where they actually start the open authentication process would, would be here, obviously. Uh, so we're going to add an extra uh, field here to what this is it's called prompt. What it does is basically, uh, even if the cookie with the ID has been stored on the computer and they log in, 
it will still prompt them to select the account because obviously if they log out, it can be a, it can be a bit jarring for them just to just automatically log in without them selecting something, it's that, without them selecting the actual account. So we, that's what the reason why I uh, put that. And then now I need to create the actual... Uh, route that they'll get sent to after they've logged in, which is here. Oh wait, actually no, sorry. That's, I don't know why it's rude, so I'm not entirely sure. Why? We'll just copy this for now, actually. And then we'll put an iron function here. And then uh, we'll just say base.send user uh, dot, no sorry. Yeah, vec.user. This will deserialize it. This will start the deserialize function, and then uh, username to display the actual name, and then um, it will create the logout route now, which we'll just set. Yeah, we'll set it to off. Like logout. Let's create it here, and then they they actually missed out something. So the way that we they actually haven't ended the cookie session, which is very useful. I'm not entirely sure why, but we'll just do that now. The way that you do that is rec.session equals null. And then we'll, send, we'll say we send the user because if the logout has been successful, then nothing, then this won't be sent basically. But obviously, if we haven't logged out, then this will be sent. Okay, so just see if everything's working. Uh. Okay, so we'll go to OAuth, Google, yeah, just OAuth Google, because that was the, uh, sign in, choose an account, this is my account here, LFC production, which is my Google account name, so that's where that comes from, and then we'll choose logout now, so we'll just say OAuth slash, uh, what was it, OAuth slash logout, OAuth, Slash, log out, and then yeah, nothing's displayed. So we so we successfully logged out there, uh, and uh, um, just to show that it's worked in the Mongo uh, database. Okay, show DBS. So this so the tutorial DB is now being created, uh, which up here. Uh, now now we can access that. Um, and then users is the collection name because obviously we specified that uh, db.users sorry oh. db.users find and then here we go here username lfc production everything's stored the google id here uh, and yeah that's how to do it it's been stored in the database um, hope you find this video useful. I'll, I'll put a link, I'll link to everything that I've used in this in the description. And uh, yes, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful. Post any, if you need me to answer any questions, uh, then post it in, in the comments of the video. And then I'll, I'll yeah, have a good one.